people have devices? Are you connected at all? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if you could open up your devices, whether a phone or a, a tablet or a laptop, that would be okay. <clears throat> So there's a, a link there, a short URL there, or a, a QR code. Okay. And so uh, basically, this is an online editing activity, proofreading activity. Okay. So once you connect. Uh, to this activity, it should show up on your device, and then um, basically, let's see who can be the fastest to find all the language mistakes and fix them. You fix them by touching a word and then typing in the correct answer. I'll put it up once people have uh, finished connecting. At the end, uh, you can uh, submit, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you opened it, this is what it showed. Oh yeah. uh, no, I doubled, like I tapped it twice and it actually just went through. Yeah. Like I, I hit one and I just like, yeah. okay. I'll see if I can open it. Redo it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh yeah. You click one word and then you go to a drag and click another. You click on one word. Yeah, and, I'll show you. Yeah. I mean, uh, so here I'm going to click on the third, right? And then back down. Right down. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> right. so I'm just, I didn't need to do that. One, of, one of the ideas is that uh, in this particular activity, all the words are editable. So. Um, But yeah, I haven't encountered that The number one question I get is how to put So it's not as bad as we imagine. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, as you saw, there's a error correction uh, functionality, uh, grouping and matching, identifying and marking. So you can give students a text and ask them to identify, you know, find the compare and contrast language. And you can actually specify, get them to find, like, what is the pair language, what is the contrast language. It's not just find all of them together. There's different categories you can find. So uh, some noticing and things like that. And there's a function I like mind mapping and note taking by hand. You can share a widget that they could take notes on something and then share that with you. Potentially, you could give feedback on their notes that way. <clears throat> ordering sentences, ordering words. Uh, you can do oral responses so students can actually uh, speak and uh, record an answer, and then that would be uh, shared with you. I'll show you uh, in a minute the, uh, the way to do that. And there's various games as well. Um, so there's jigsaw puzzle games, and there's uh, hangman, and uh, hit words, and crosswords, and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some advantages of using widgets? Well, there are quite a few variety of activity types and functions. Some of you uh, <clears throat> might be familiar with uh, uh, certain uh, platforms and things like that. that uh, uh, were around uh, for quite a long time, but they really expanded the activity types um, and the way to mix and match. And so there is uh, obviously that aspect of automatic feedback for students and potential for more detailed feedback on answers. And, um, so you know, uh, one of the issues, of course, is that uh, if, you, if students are doing just a paper activity or something like that in class, then some of them finish early and. You might have time to go to these students and just check, but they could just get their answers immediately and then put up their hand if they have a specific question or something like that. So they don't have to wait for the teacher to get the answers. Um, yeah, they work on different devices, BYOD from your own device, so on laptops and tablets and smartphones. Uh, so the accessibility. And uh, there's various sharing functions so the uh, students can share with uh, the teacher, obviously, by email or by uh, sending to the platform. They can share with each other, and uh, teachers can share with colleagues. Uh, results are trackable. Okay, so that uh, if, you, if you sign up for the service, then you can, students can submit their responses, and you can see the responses results, and then you can uh, make pedagogical decisions based on, based on that. Okay. And uh, it is compatible with uh, uh, some LMSs, at least. I, I know for sure Google and, and Canvas is compatible with it. I'm not sure with the other You can integrate uh, these widgets into the LMS and have the uh, results go to Gradle. <coughs> Um, so there are some caveats, of course, you know, once you get you know, experiences, once students open up their devices, they might get distracted, so a certain amount of discipline involved. Okay. Uh, depending on how you run it, uh, it could be isolating, you could have students each on their device just working on it. So there is a possibility where, you know, students, if one student has a tablet, they can work on it together and lead to some sharing. Uh, this is, uh, you know, preset answers, obviously, right? Uh, you can't foresee necessarily all the answers students are going to come up with. Uh, for example, I don't know if you saw in this uh, editing uh, activity, there was a, a sentence that started with and. And there are different ways of fixing that, but there were only two preset answers that I had. So, you know, that, that is somewhat of a confusing. But uh, potentially, if you saw different answers, you could just, for the next time, enter those as possible answers. Uh, you have to be careful, of course, you know, is there an actual reason, purpose, a uh, 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 you know, clear advantage in using this as opposed to just doing it on paper or on the PDF? <laughs> uh, and there is a, a cost involved. Um, so there's uh, different subscriptions. Uh, uh, the basic fee, just so you know, for bookwidgets.com is $49 a year, but uh, uh, there's also packages for um, groups of teachers and things like that. Yeah. 
So uh, let me just show you quickly on the website. flashcard uh, kind of activity for them. This is a split, uh, split worksheet or split whiteboard. So you have a scrollable text and then questions on the side. So students can read the question and then scroll through the text to find the The reading comprehension and things like that. Whiteboard for note taking or drawing. Uh, I'll come back to the worksheet in a minute. So here are some of the games. Mind map there. Uh, they do have some image stuff incorporated. This uh, originally was created for ebooks and things like that, but like I said, some of the standalone stuff works best. Right? Um, and then there's a planner, a checklist, or form surveys. Let's go to the worksheet because there's quite a few. Within a worksheet, you can create uh, different activities. Um, normally, I would have signed in and show this, but we don't have uh, enough time. But, so you have your standard questions, like multiple choice and uh, short answer. You have blank fills. You have drag and drop. You have matching. You have the uh, within the worksheet. You have the word ordering, the sentence ordering. Um, and uh, <clears throat> again, with possibilities of different feedback. And so, uh, for example, at Poly U, in, in the course I'm teaching, we have a PDF uh, version of the materials. And uh, with this, uh, uh, students, of course, uh, can either, you know, some, a lot of them are just sort of either writing it on paper, their answers, or they might have the ability to write within their PDF. But, uh, I convert some of the activities directly into this, and then there are certain advantages in terms of their ability to interact with it. Uh, we are kind of at Poly also working at incorporating these into evil versions of the materials, but uh, that's sort of a longer range product, longer term uh, project. Um, so, um, basically, uh, I've done use these within classes, during classes, uh, and then also uh, assign them. Uh, basically, um, I guess I'm almost out of time, but uh, this is just a short introduction, but you can explore on your own. Like I said, there's a free trial, and uh, um, you can do different settings so that you can have the students submit, and then the results go to uh, your, you have an account on the students, and then, uh, you can track their answers and their uh, responses, and give feedback if they're open-ended questions. Through the, uh, the track of the results uh, page. But it's, it's all fairly simple. But uh, yeah, so it's an option, something to consider. I, I wouldn't say it's uh, revolutionary or anything like that, but uh, the variety of activities is great, and uh, uh, the ability of uh, students to, to work on it uh, at their own pace and, and get the answers immediately. And then you know, afterwards, you don't have to cover necessarily every answer, but you get a sense what students are having trouble with by looking at the results and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're having the questions after. Yeah, uh, you, you have one quick question. You can ask Jenny now. <laughs> Just very quickly, how much does it cost? It's uh, $49 a, a year. Um, yeah. 
but uh, you know, uh, I imagine uh, if you can, especially if you can justify it in terms of like a large number of teachers teaching one course and then sharing the cost, the department probably. Okay. Thanks,